Okay, so whilst I've been putting 10 of those on the uh, cocktail sticks with a little bit of blue tack, actually 12 of those where you've got the uh, other little pivots on there, I was thinking what I would do is instead of just going straight on with the olive drab, just on that interior bit, I'm actually going to put on first, uh, basically going to prime it with the rust. I'm going to actually give it a bit of a go, what the experiment's going to be for the... Um, for the outside. So I actually thought this is a good opportunity. I'll effectively prime it in the rust, uh, then put on the gunmetal onto those little torsion bar. That's the little suspension um, beams we got there. Then put on the olive drab. But before that, I might just um, put on um, a little bit of mask gold in places, just so I know I can uh, knock it off again afterwards, uh, just to see what sort of chipping effect that we've actually got and how that works. And then I can actually then yeah, close it up. To be honest, that chipping effect probably won't be seen very much, but it's going to give an opportunity just to test it out before actually doing it on the outside, just to check that the theory works. So I'll give this a bit of a, a uh, shake up first. There we go. And what we've done is I've given that enough of a shake just to try to get rid of There's still a little bit of sediment on the bottom. Now this one, the nature of this, some of the uh, MRP paints do actually have a, uh, a ball in there, a little ball bearing, whether it's a bearing or a little mini marble in there. But that's all nicely shaken up now. I did also put a little bit of uh, the Mr. Uh, Colour Leveling Thinner through, literally just a little dash in the brush just to uh, check that everything was working just a second ago. And I don't want too much of this, so I will just using half a cocktail stick just it just makes it easier to pour it in oh far too much in there far too much that's why i never normally use the uh one of the larger color cups because it's easy just to put too much in so let's give this a bit of a spray we'll start off with so we're doing the in internal bit first. So let's just start lightly putting this rust colour on. And I'm just using this as a primer for now. So I'm not too worried about the coverage. So that's our rust base on there just for the moment. So that's mainly just acting, to be honest, that's more of a primer. And just so we can have an experiment with the chipping process. I think I'm just gonna have to do a couple of, uh, it's quite wet and it's not, yeah, it's not exactly thick, shall we say. I think a couple of, uh, say dusty coats, but they're not really dusty when they're that wet. do two possibly even three coats just to uh, make sure the plastic's gone and we're already through that little colour cup. Okay so that's just check uh, they're all there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve great we have got uh, ten of those little torsion bar things plus uh, other little bits so Now we're going to be putting on the olive drab over here on the insides. Let's try some different techniques. I think what we'll want to do is actually something that I've never tried before. I'm going to try is uh, salt water or uh, we'll dampen it, sprinkle some salt on 
and then when you flake the salt off after you've painted it on you should reveal the rust underneath i was going to go for some of the mask all type thing like the uh, liquid mask something like that which is uh that's the vallejo liquid mask um and i was initially going to do just something like um put a little drop on there and i just actually might be the best way see if i can take that lid off it's just a little bit on a cocktail stick and then actually i've just got a little knob on there just see if i could uh do oh that's not the theory is good but it's not seeming to work in practice so um bring in a little bit tighter you can see i've got a little blue blob on there but the idea literally be just see if i could put on some thin sort of uh, scratches again this is on the inside no one's going to see this this is where we can experiment so you can see we're just catching the light but i think that is probably going to be a bit too uh, not as not as small as what we're really looking for so Actually, using that, using the side of the cocktail stick, actually, I just put it on there by accident. So I could just push down, uh, sack that there. No, I've just got a line. Uh, taking the surplus off. Again, rough and ready is going to be the best way to do this. I'm just trying to put it on let's try it with the salt method let's um let's go grab some salt see if we can give that a go okay so i've just got back from the kitchen i've just raided the cupboards i've got just some regular table salt there as well as uh, some uh, sea salt flakes which are a bit bigger so we're going to have a bit of an experiment with these just on the inside of these skirts i've also quickly just uh Gave, uh, given the airbrush a quick flush through uh, just to clean it out with some cleaner run a bit of water through there and what I've now got in this little bottle here is just uh, some uh, uh, tap water it says distilled water on there but it's actually just tap water I've got in there and uh, what we'll do is just spray uh, the water on here just to dampen it down the idea should hopefully be We'll try this version first. Sprinkle a bit of, I don't know if that's going to be, I think, it's either too fine or not wet enough. Uh, I'll have to do just to... That's sticking on there. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more water on. It with some of the larger flakes as well. If I just sprinkle. Okay, so actually the larger flakes do show up a bit better. Now hopefully because there is water on there. Actually, I'm going to put, I've got a bit of that small, more regular table salt. So I'm going to put some of that on. I don't think it was quite wet enough. Now, here's the plan. Uh, I give, just give that a moment, turn it like that, give it a shake. We had a couple of bits drop off, but now those bits have just stayed on going to repeat that on the other parts and what should hopefully happen is that will give us a um, when we paint over obviously once the water's dried we'll paint over with the dark olive then give that a rub and hopefully the salt should come off uh, as well as the little bit of mask oil actually we still got on there a little bit of rubber mask and hopefully 
uh, that will then reveal the uh, some of these uh, chunks of sea salt are oh, quite large. think I'm doing too much of this to be perfectly honest but uh, it's buried away when no one's really going to be able to see it and actually if it turns out that I have done a bit too much of it then at least it's then going to be visible and then I don't think I really need that one I think it's actually better to stick with larger bits So now we've got some wet salt on there. Now all we've really got to do is wait for this to dry properly. And then once that's dried, we're gonna make sure it's yeah, properly dried before we actually paint, uh, especially as well, if we're gonna be putting uh, this lacquer based one, you've gotta make sure that there's uh, no water on there because uh, it could have problems with that sort of sitting. So I think we're just gonna have to Give that a bit of time just to make sure that all properly dries off and then once we're sure that's dried off we can get some of that uh, um, on there. Now we're actually just given it a second uh, coat of the SEC number 15 olive drab uh, just because after that first one dried uh, I thought that brown rust was coming through a little bit too much so uh, I know it's not really going to be seen but because uh, this is an experiment how it wants to go I wanted to make sure we got a bit more of the olive look on there so uh, that seems to have pretty much dried now so um, let's experiment with how to take this off now I uh, it's actually, before I do that, it has actually got quite a nice texture and in fact uh, probably there's a few bits where some of that rust is a little bit thinner. You can probably just catch it there where it actually does have, hang on, you can see a bit of a browny sort of, um, I've actually put it on a little bit thinner in patches without realising it. Um, I don't know whether the salt is kind of soaking up. I know salt obviously does have absorb water, um, but it seems to be, absor I don't know if it's absorbing as well as um, the uh, you know the lacquer sort of um, in here uh, and that might be sort of pulling some of the colour out maybe some of the colour is uh, getting soaked up by the salt um, and I'm not too sure on that one but first of all I'm just thinking oh and I have got a few forgot I caught my eye still a bit shiny actually um, there's a bit where I put the uh, the liquid mask on the latex mask so first of all I'm just going to give it a bit of a rub This is obviously taking off some of the larger bits, which was more of the flakes. And already, you can see we've actually got that sort of a rusty look coming through, actually. But that does actually give it quite a nice texture. And uh, maybe just uh, got a toothbrush. I have actually got some water because uh, I didn't know whether it might be worth um, yeah, wetting it with the. Uh, water just to break it down but it seems to be coming off actually okay with just a bit of a rub and uh, uh, some of the liquid mass coming off as I rub it that's the that's the larger chip bits actually is the where the liquid mass was and actually it kind of actually has a very that texture to it actually does feel like I'm running my thumb over um, a rusty piece of metal there so uh, hmm that has actually worked uh, all right actually i would say so um the larger parts that was where i tried it with the uh, the liquid mask where was it i used the uh Vallejo liquid mask actually i put a few blobs out on a cocktail stick and blobbed it down and definitely that was um larger but the more of that spotting so the very larger bits would have been the blobs of the liquid mask 
The larger flaking bits would have been the sea salt, which was uh, larger flakes, and the more textury bits, where, where it's more just uh, dots of rusting, that is just the regular table salt. And actually, uh, that, so it actually has gone quicker and easier than what I thought. I'd, I've got some water ready to um, try to, like with the, um, uh, what's it, actually I can just rub that off with my thumb first of all. But this has got a bit more of the sea salt flakes on there. And again, it does have that real sort of a uh, texture. There's a, See that line that come out there, that was a game where I about so I drew a line with a cocktail stick. But you can you can definitely hear that scratchiness. It really does you know have a texture to my fingers of metal. And if I get that make sure I get the larger lumps out. And again, definitely, definitely looks like you know this is where water and mud and stuff would flick up, and it would scrape that paint off, and you know, um, general wear and tear, you know, chassis getting muddy type thing. So again, the bits that haven't really worked so well were those larger bits where I tried it with the uh, liquid mask, but actually trying different sizes of salt, more of the fine grains give more of that speckled effect. And the larger pieces, more of a flake. Now it's not looking absolutely perfect. It's my first go at it, <laughs> but for what we're looking to achieve at the moment, which is really just a, a test, that looks okay. We, I don't think it's gonna be really visible on the finished model. And then finally, we've got a few sort of lumps here. So definitely that sort of dark, greeny brown color. rubbing that off now we can see we're revealing some of those uh, rusty patches just noticed as well these arms, these uh, torsion arms, are actually covering up the uh, little location tabs, which you can just sort of make out that one there from, uh, yeah. So those are actually going directly over. So Airfix have thought about that. They've done those, um, actually I remember I did find it was a bit, you know, symmetrical. And that's because obviously they, they've actually you know, put them in a place knowing that they are going to be covering them up as they go down. So um, that's a good bit of thinking on Airfix's part, to be honest. Now it's a bit odd that one of those didn't, one of those arms didn't fit in properly, but went in another one and dropped another one in place, and that fell in perfectly. So there we go, those have now dropped in on each side. And these parts will cover. Try to get them right way around. So we've just got uh, no real location tabs, but there's a channel just on the back there for that to go in. Uh, actually, it's going to effectively be. Is it? Do they? Yes. So, what I will do is use some of the Ravel contact because this, these are slight, um, I was going to say T, uh, kind of T at an angle, capital T sort of bits at an angle. Will be going against there. I'm thinking that's yeah. 
<laughs> when that goes on there. I'm just going to run a little bit of... It's going to be tricky to get the, uh, the brush for the extra thin up into there without... Uh, well, yeah, those arms are going to be getting in the way. So we'll put a bit of this on these internal ones. And run the bead along only a little. I don't want it squidging out too much. Shouldn't be seen, but it's more just to get a good seal. So I've just done that on the internal sort of T uh, mounting points. That goes into that channel there. So as they press on, that should be giving us the initial grip from the inside. Now, give it the extra thin on this part. No, there wouldn't have been enough room to try to get that up, get that brush in that gap. Oh, we're pushing there, I've managed to pop that out. No, I don't think I could have got that brush in those little holes. There's only a little bit of a gap there to have actually got the uh, brush in between those torsion arms. So we've got all of those now in place. And just to confirm, hardly any of that rusting is, is there. In fact, to be honest, it's all so dark in there that what's actually in there, although it's that olive drab colour with the rusting taken off, it still looks pretty much the same colour as those torsion um, Washing arms there. Next part, uh, we've got to have a look at the um, choices here. So uh, that was part uh, part three. Got everything. Got that rear part on. Yeah, that's fine. Those are on. So we've got a couple of parts just to go on there. But the first choice we're going to be making, and this really decides. Do you have the toe rings on there, or uh, which is for option A, or um, do you have the mounting points for that hedge cutter? And uh, we're going to be going for, I initially was going to be going for that one because I thought that would look interesting, but actually I think we're just going to be going for option A there, which is um, the, just without the hedge cutter, but uh, with the snow camouflage, that whitewash just liberally applied, applied by the crew, uh, should make it a bit more interesting. Now these have got some very nice uh, mesh grills on and I've got to say that is some very finely moulded detail. Now there is some photo etch that does come with this kit for a grill but that has uh, got some nice fine detail to that one. I don't know whether that's really going to come out but you might just have to trust me you might hear it there we go. Again, nice moulded detail on those part, these little uh, couplings, almost like a train coupling that looks like. Or a, or a kind of a, a over-engineered car tow bar. Towing anything away, 
those are on. Wait for those to dry before I put the little hooks on there. We'll pop on this bit next. And I'm going to do this, this according to the manual. It should be built first and then attached. But I think it's going to be easier to uh, build it on. Maybe we can make sure it's square on. on this mounting point first just because it's a you know, bit easier to get access to the top of it see where that uh, bit goes it just would have been a bit awkward um, that's what the, that's the knob on the top let's put a little dab more on the bottom again just for the capillary reaction just to make sure it does put it around at least that way I'm not struggling trying to just get a little tip of the glue brush just in there or down there or something to get to it let's add oh, let's just check their dry yeah check the driver is wiggling with the finger good idea just clips on These, I mean, to be honest, do just clip on. They kind of spring clamp themselves on there. But as before, we'll put a bit of glue on, make sure this goes the right way up. So that's the front end, back end on. Looks, we'll look at the wheel set and the tracks. Now, wheel set and the tracks, we're uh, not going to bother with at the moment. I mean, what we could do is you know, make them up. Actually, I don't think I will. We'll just sort of jump ahead. We're going to stick on with the main build just for the moment, just whilst we've got kind of like momentum with that. So we're going to skip this to build up the individual wheels that are then going to be going on. And then we're not going to be doing the tracks because we're going to want to be painting those wheels and those tracks and let get all of them on separately after we've done the main paint for it. Uh, build instructions are always exactly that, instructions for building not necessarily for um, building in the right order for painting it's literally just how you know what order do you glue bits together to build an unpainted model and we're now going to be getting to this part where we've got actually some photo etched uh, putting on the photo etch as well so we've got some photo etch to go on there but we've also need to drill some holes out as well I'm not too sure why they're not on there so we've got some reference pictures for the photo etch and that's just going to be then doing the top plate. So that is A1, and we're needing the drill for E19 and 20. I think we just had sprue E to hand just a moment ago. They both look similar. I don't know how, how much the same they are. I will keep them separate. Just to make it sure. So 19 being the lower number I put to the left. So we, we increase the size. That's my little uh, way of knowing when I take bits off. And uh, it's not going to be immediately obvious which number is what. Then just knowing, I know that's 19, that's 20, that's the order that they go in. We need to grab that lower part, the top deck, just one of these, and there should be some photo action there as well, which is, which was a bonus I was not expecting. So here we are, sprue A. It says sprue A1, but it is the it is the only piece on that sprue, which is a, uh, and it is very nice. This has got some bit of recessed detail, a few catches, a few uh, hatch doors, so got some rivets on there. Yeah, 
myself first. It's a more of an H shape actually, so they've obviously done it in a way, putting on its own sprue, because although it is a large piece, I guess it could quite easily be uh, damaged. bent and slapped. Where am I still attached? Actually just check a lot, I just assumed there was nothing. No, no that's fine. Just chucking it in the bin. I just actually only had a cursory look and a piece in here. So again that's just to make sure that that's all that remains a square and safe in transit, which it did, so it worked. And that part would, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit now, but that part would uh, sit on there. Okay, I will want to obviously check actually that I would be able to uh, get the tracks on. Yeah, that would give you plenty of clearance to get the tracks on, that should be fine. But why does that not seem quite square? No, oh, that will be fine. So let's sand off some of those little pieces on there. And then we had to do a little bit of drilling there as well, didn't we? Just on the underside. And what I will do, instead of putting the photo etch on now, as it's calling for, I'm going to mount it on as per this part here. That will give this a lot more of a strut, stable and structured place because what I don't want to do is put that photo etch on and then for um, to have a bit of movement in that as I'm trying to get that to hold in place. Uh, once that's then, and I know that's not going to be moving, then I know it's going to be remaining a flat surface to get the uh, photo etch in. Oh, literally, that just clips in on the side. Okay. Ah, okay, right. Very nice tolerances that these are pretty much friction fits, which is uh, nice. <laughs> of course, just looking at that, they uh, okay, those little um, I said they were supports but uh, braces, I think it's also to uh, help keep the track uh, on that just run through a groove on the track, probably not too sure find out. And then I'm just hoping that putting these on isn't going to uh, affect getting the track on. We can work around it. We always do. That's all fitting very nice. Very nice actually. I was just checking where outside to put the glue. Um, in fact, I'm going to run the glue. You know, genuinely I was looking at what's what's the joy, you know, what's just a, a recess panel line, you know, what's just actually moulded. I am chucking plenty on because this plastic is about two mil thick, so it can get it so that they've got enough in there to sort of penetrate through to, uh, you know, give us a good bond. I will do a little line along the top. Yeah, just 
out a little bit then. So we go across the top with that. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to, yeah, as long as I stick a load in there, because I can't now glue onto that section up there um, directly, because that that panel is going across. It's not getting the access in there, which is fine. Let's say, as long as I give it the good news on each side of there. Seep its way through, and then we come to this front section. Now, this is the bit I'm noticing might just need to be held down. Kind of, it's not. There's nothing for it to click in place on here. Whereas that rear part seemed to click. This just seems to be hold it. seem to be a bit of a, I wouldn't say there's a flush flush fit there, there is a little bit of a step just on that part. Really in there, because I really want those, that, ah there we go, that plastic to sort of be Bonding. Okay, once the those go in, I said there was going to be a step there. There shouldn't be actually now. Those two side bits were just lifting up. So if I put the pressure down on there, that is just keeping that on. And so that top plate should be in place. And I don't think it would make much difference, but that little section there, whereabouts the photo etch goes on. Uh, if I'd been having to sort of uh, this sort of plate here, don't think I have to, but if I had have been able to try to clamp that down, I would have been potentially bending and snapping off photo etch. So I just want to, oh, I can still see that's not gone. At least I can, I can put my finger on it and push it into, into place and just hold that, hold that square just whilst we just wait for that foot that front bit which I couldn't have done with photo etch or I could have done but I'll be potentially bending up and snapping off photo etch I think I'm almost there I don't, want to, don't get a gap when I lift that off that's fine there we are quite well so far. Next bit is actually plastic and then we'll put that bit of photo wet on. So back onto sprue E again. Sprue part E11. Where would 11 be? There we are. won't be seen so part of me thinks don't have to make them too neat but you need to make sure that they do fit flush otherwise it could be at then starting to try to spread it out that are going to go in there. Give that a bit more of a rub. And 
actually, because I've got a flat surface on each of those, for that to go on in there, on the sides. A bit of that on each side. First. Just to soften it. Now, slide it in. Like so, it was already in there, right. Brilliant. looks good to me okay I have a bit of white um, tile that's an old bathroom tile that way we know we've got a flat solid surface on to cut and what I like to use is a blade which is more of that rounded sort of scalpel blade so then you can always rock over um, this ensures that it keeps it flat so when I'm cutting, it will end up um, basically uh, flat. Yeah, um, if you do it on a cutting mat, you can kind of start getting a bit of a curve in things. What I will do though, is because I want to make sure I keep these in order, use a bit of tape, just a piece of Tamiya tape. Just because we've got two twos, a three and a four, and so I don't lose which bit's which. This is, this is something more useful for doing with um, smaller bits when you, you don't want things pinging off when you've done it. But I just put a bit of Tamiya tape on the back there. And then, as I cut through, should, you know, sort of remove them, they should then be essentially in place. So there we are. Now we've got two twos, a three and a four work out where these are going to go and in fact I'm going to grab a little bit more of this Tamiya tape, pop that there, and then some super glue, I've just got some cheap super glue from Tool Station, about £1.20 or something. Blob there, and a cocktail stick. So it looks like part two, which is the first one which has got a little uh, bevel on the edge. Uh, so yeah, there's a sort of angled, angled end to it. Put those on first, and in fact you can see where they're going to go. There is, like those bits underneath, we have actually got uh, lines there, and you can see which way up that they'll fit because there's the little angled part there. So in, what we'll do is run far too much super glue. That's sort of, that completely blobbed off there. Load up the cocktail stick far too much. And did it in there. And there we go, we've got that one in there. So we'll just push that in. Then as I say, there's a the little recess which it fits 
perfectly in. I'm using obviously the end of the cocktail stick it hasn't got the glue on. I just want to just lift a little bit there. Maybe some of the glue dried. They're not actually the same both sides. There is actually a little uh, groove recessed into this. Actually, using these tweezers, try and do that lengthways actually, where they got the bend. See if I can actually just run it very carefully through so we just get a line. I'm trying, not, I'm trying to just get a, a thin coat knot so I actually get it in there. Try and put that on at right angles, which is going to be a lot easier said than done because it's going to, there's nothing on there to keep it. Incentive to stay upright. thin bead of super glue down it's gone it's stuck at one end but not the other okay and use now we've kind of got that in place got that on the right angle Hopefully, it's a quick spray of that. Far too much of that. And that should. I've got that super glue just to quickly dry and harden in place. Now, I just want to make sure that the evaporates off before I now try and put the next part on, because otherwise, I'll put, as soon as I put the glue on there, that will just lock it instantly. That will just dry that accelerator. Very finely done by, uh, by Airfix, but as I say, could have just done a length, this in one length, where it's just got folded. That would have been a lot easier. Trust me, a lot easier. <laughs> Again, just try to run that across the top of my little blob of glue. So now we should have a, a line of glue on the bottom. And hopefully, okay. Theory or sound again failed in practice. No, just 
got no glue on there at all. Okay, I think what I'm gonna have to do, run the bead of glue down there again on that one. Start to get a bit too creepy. Sharp. Right, so I got a bit more of a sharper point. Yeah, there's a little channel on here. Obviously, that's designed to go fit in. immediately gone pretty much in place and it's kind of holding so I'm just going to quickly put another spray of that on and that should again just hopefully lock super glue in so we now got those two little more finer photo etch just uh, that's just some angle iron sort of um, steel sort of thing Uh, just noticed there actually I should have taken care of got some ejector pin sort of marks some sort of circles there where it was pushed out the mould now they've buried that away and you're not really going to be able to see it but just thinking I might just for completeness uh, still I don't know whether it would be worth just filling in those little uh, they're probably not even coming out on camera actually uh, with the lights but there's definitely a few ejection sort of mold, uh, marks going up there so might be worth um, just getting a little bit of yeah we'll do it more just uh, more for the sake of it than actually because it needs to be done bit of um, perfect plastic putty let's squeeze take off the top bit And if I just give it a little bit of a rub, you probably won't really be able to see it. Actually, those ones will be. The ones behind that little uh, beam that we had to put in, I don't think I'm going to bother with. Because to be honest, that those ones would be completely impossible to see. The ones that are going along the length, uh, I'm going to say I don't know whether they would be impossible to see or not, so let's not take a chance. And uh, if they are possible to see, then you'd have to be looking really closely in just the right light, at just the right angle. But hey, you never know when that right, what that angle is going to be. I don't think they're really going to need any additional filing down. Just taking the heavy off. Oh, you can see they are little, these little circles down there. Yeah, a bit, a bit surprising, but as I say, don't think it's an area that people are going to see. And there we go. We've just filled those little uh, circles in. You can see exactly where they are because they are. We've got half a dozen perfect round circles down each side. It just shows how sort of uh, deep they were as well. Excellent. Okay, so I think next part is to uh, go and have a cup of tea. I think. And then it's going to be a case of then building on to part 10, which I'm um, really going to be building up the top section, which is actually going to then be sitting on there. And then we're going to be going into mud guards, those sort of things. Won't, I don't think I'll be putting those on straight away because that's going to then uh, avoid access to the wheels and getting the tracks on. Um, 
but just working out what bits are going to be going where. Then uh, flipping it over, I think we're going to then start be going on to um, hatches and exterior details. And then it won't really be long once you get the hatches on there, start building up the turret, um, having the stores on the turret as well. And I'm going for the option which has got more of the external stores on. And uh, then going to be getting on to painting and weathering it. But we have got that bit of photo etch on there, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to pop a little bit more glue on that one. That's just starting to wobble a little bit as well. So I'm going to pop a little bit of glue on there and wait for that to dry just before we start then getting on to the next stage. Brilliant.